Section. Introduction. We're going to talk about a popular trend in computer vision and other fields, known as denoising diffusion models, DDM. These models use a denoising autoencoder, DAY, to remove different levels of noise through a diffusion process. They're particularly good at generating high-quality, realistic images. In fact, they're so good that they can help us understand the visual content of these images. Originally, DAEs were used to learn representations from data in a self-supervised way. The most successful versions of DAEs today are based on masking noise, like predicting missing text in languages, like BERT, or missing patches in images, like MAY. However, these masking-based versions are quite different from removing additive noise, like Gaussian noise. In the task of separating additive noise, there's no clean signal available. Despite this, today's DDMs for generation are mostly based on additive noise, suggesting that they can learn representations without explicitly marking what's known and unknown. Recently, there's been a growing interest in studying the representation learning ability of DDMs. Some studies have taken pre-trained DDMs, which were originally designed for generation, and evaluated their representation quality for recognition. They found promising results using these generation-oriented models. However, these studies leave some questions unanswered. For example, it's unclear whether the representation capability is gained by a denoising-driven process or a diffusion-driven process. In our work, we delve deeper into this issue. Instead of using a pre-trained DDM that's designed for generation, we train models that are designed for recognition. We start by breaking down a DDM and gradually transforming it into a classical day. Through this process, we examine every aspect of a modern DDM, with the aim of learning representations. Surprisingly, we find that the most important component is a tokenizer that creates a low-dimensional latent space. This observation seems to be independent of the specifics of the tokenizer. We find that it's the low-dimensional latent space, not the specifics of the tokenizer, that allows a day to achieve good representations. Thanks to the effectiveness of PCA, our research ultimately leads us to a simple architecture that's very similar to the classical day. We project the image onto a latent space using patchwise PCA, add noise, and then project it back by inverse PCA. Then we train an autoencoder to predict a denoised image. We call this architecture, Latent Denoising Autoencoder, LDAY. Our research also reveals many other interesting properties that lie between DDM and classical DAY. For example, we find that even using a single noise level can achieve a decent result with our LDAY. The role of using multiple levels of noise is similar to a form of data augmentation, which can be beneficial, but not an enabling factor. Finally, we compare our results with previous baselines. On one hand, our results are significantly better than the pre-trained models. On the other hand, our results fall short of baseline contrastive learning methods and masking-based methods, but the gap is reduced. Our study suggests more room for further research along the direction of DAY and DDM. In the history of machine learning and computer vision, the generation of images has been closely linked with the development of unsupervised or self-supervised learning. Approaches in generation are essentially forms of un-self-supervised learning, where models are trained without labeled data, learning to capture the underlying distributions of the input data. There's a common belief that a model's ability to generate high-quality data indicates its potential for learning good representations. Generative adversarial networks, GAN, for example, have sparked a lot of interest in adversarial representation learning. Variational autoencoders, VAEs, originally designed as generative models for approximating data distributions, have become a standard in learning localized representations. Similarly, the impressive generative performance of denoising diffusion models, DDM, has attracted attention for their potential in representation learning. Some studies have started to investigate this direction by evaluating pre-trained DDM networks. However, while a model's generation capability suggests a certain level of understanding, it doesn't necessarily translate to representations useful for downstream tasks. Our study delves deeper into these issues. 
On the other hand, although denoising autoencoders, they have laid the foundation for autoencoding-based representation learning. Their success has been mainly limited to scenarios involving masking-based corruption. To the best of our knowledge, little or no recent research has reported results on classical day variants with additive Gaussian noise. We believe that the underlying reason is that a simple day baseline performs poorly. Section Summary Denoising diffusion models, DDMs, are popular in generative models for computer vision. While DDMs achieve impressive image generation quality, it is unclear whether their representation capability is gained through denoising or diffusion processes. In this work, we deconstruct DDMs into recognition-oriented models and discover that the critical component for good representations is a low-dimensional latent space, rather than the specifics of the tokenizer. We propose a latent denoising autoencoder, LDAY, architecture that achieves decent results with a single noise level, suggesting that denoising is the main factor in representation capability. Section. Background. Denoising diffusion models. Our research begins with a denoising diffusion model, DDM. This model starts with a clean data point and gradually adds noise to it. At a specific time step, the noisy data is calculated by adding a certain amount of noise to the original data. This noise is sampled from a Gaussian distribution, and the amount of noise added is determined by two scaling factors. By default, the sum of the squares of these two factors is set to 1. The DDM is trained to remove this noise, depending on the time step. Unlike the original denoising autoencoder that predicts a clean input, the modern DDM often predicts the noise. To do this, it minimizes a loss function that measures the difference between the predicted and actual noise. The model is trained for various noise levels, depending on the time step. In the generation process, the trained model is applied repeatedly until it reaches the clean signal. DDMs can work with two types of input spaces. One is the original pixel space, where the raw image is used directly. The other option is to build DDMs on a latent space produced by a tokenizer. In this case, a pre-trained tokenizer is used to map the image into its latent representation. As a starting point, we train the models for 400 epochs on ImageNet with a resolution of 256 by 256 pixels. Our baseline results show a linear probe accuracy of 57.5% using half of the encoder of the model. The generation quality of this model is 11.6, measured by the Frechet inception distance. This is the starting point of our deconstruction process. Our deconstruction process is divided into three stages. First, we adjust the settings in the model to be more focused on self-supervised learning. Next, we deconstruct and simplify the tokenizer step by step. Finally, we try to reverse as many DDM-inspired designs as possible, pushing the models towards a classical denoising autoencoder. While a DDM is a form of a denoising autoencoder, it was originally developed for image generation. Many designs in a DDM are oriented towards this task. Some designs are not suitable for self-supervised learning, while others are not necessary if visual quality is not a concern. In this section, we adjust our DDM baseline for the purpose of self-supervised learning. Our results reveal that self-supervised learning performance is not correlated to generation quality. The representation capability of a DDM is not necessarily the outcome of its generation capability. Next, we further deconstruct the tokenizer by making substantial simplifications. Finally, we consider a simpler variant which performs principal component analysis, PCA, on the patch space. PCA is equivalent to a special case of an autoencoder, in which the bases can be simply computed by eigen decomposition on a large set of randomly sampled patches, requiring no gradient-based training. We can visualize their filters in the patch space. We show the results of the linear probe accuracy of the model using these four variants of tokenizers. We draw the following observations. Section summary. In this section, the authors introduce the concept of denoising diffusion models, DDMs, 
which sequentially add noise to clean data points. A denoising diffusion model is then learned to remove the noise, and it can operate on either the original pixel space or a latent space produced by a tokenizer. The authors then describe their deconstruction trajectory, which involves adapting DDMs for self-supervised learning, simplifying the tokenizer step, and attempting to reverse DDM-motivated designs. They summarize their findings, noting that self-supervised learning performance is not necessarily correlated with generation quality, and they propose simpler variants of the tokenizer, including one that performs principal component analysis, PCA, on the patch space. Section. Latent dimension of the tokenizer is crucial for DDM to work well in self-supervised learning. The importance of the tokenizer's latent dimension in self-supervised learning for DDM cannot be overstated. As illustrated in the figure, all four tokenizer variants show similar trends, regardless of their architectural and loss function differences. Interestingly, the optimal dimension is quite low, 16 or 32, even though the full dimension per patch is significantly higher, 768. Surprisingly, the convolutional VAE tokenizer isn't necessary or even preferable. Instead, all patch-based tokenizers, where each patch is encoded independently, perform similarly and consistently outperform the Conva VAE variant. Furthermore, the KL regularization term isn't needed, as both the A and PCA variants perform well. To our surprise, even the PCA tokenizer performs well. Unlike the VAE or A counterparts, the PCA tokenizer doesn't require gradient-based training. With pre-computed PCA bases, using the PCA tokenizer is more like image pre-processing than a network architecture. The effectiveness of a PCA tokenizer greatly aids us in moving modern DDM towards a classical day, as we'll demonstrate in the next subsection. High-resolution, pixel-based DDMs don't perform well for self-supervised learning. Before we proceed, we report an additional ablation that aligns with the previous observation. Specifically, we consider a naive tokenizer that performs identity mapping on patches extracted from resized images. In this case, a token is the flattened vector consisting of all pixels of a patch. In the figure, we show the results of this pixel-based tokenizer operated on an image size of 256, 128, 64, and 32, respectively with a patch size of 16, 8, 4, 2. The latent dimensions of these tokenized spaces are 768, 192, 48, and 12 per token. In all cases, the sequence length of the transformer is kept unchanged, 256. Interestingly, this pixel-based tokenizer exhibits a similar trend with other tokenizers we have studied, although the optimal dimension is shifted. In particular, the optimal dimension is 48, which corresponds to an image size of 64 with a patch size of 4. With an image size of 256 and a patch size of 16, 768, the linear probe accuracy drops dramatically to 23.6%. These comparisons show that the tokenizer and the resulting latent space are crucial for DDM day to work competitively in the self-supervised learning scenario. In particular, applying a classical day with additive Gaussian noise on the pixel space leads to poor results. Next, we continue our deconstruction trajectory and aim to get as close as possible to the classical day. We attempt to remove every single aspect that still remains between our current PCA-based DDM and the classical day practice. Through this deconstructive process, we gain better understandings of how every modern design may influence the classical day. Lastly, out of curiosity, we further study a variant with single-level noise. We note that multi-level noise, given by noise scheduling, is a property motivated by the diffusion process in DDMs it is conceptually unnecessary in a classical day. We fix the noise level as a constant, square root of one-third. Using this single level noise achieves decent accuracy of 61.5%, a 3% degradation the multi-level noise counterpart, 64.5%. Using multiple levels of noise is similar to a form of data augmentation in day. It is beneficial, but not an enabling factor. 
This also implies that the representation capability of DDN is mainly gained by the denoising-driven process, not a diffusion-driven process. As multi-level noise is useful and conceptually simple, we keep it in our final entries presented in the next section. In summary, we deconstruct a modern DDM and push it towards a classical day. We undo many of the modern designs and conceptually retain only two designs inherited from modern DDMs, a low-dimensional latent space in which noise is added, and multi-level noise. We use the entry at the end as our final day instantiation. We refer to this method as latent denoising autoencoder, or in short, L-day. Finally, to have a better sense of how different families of self-supervised learning methods perform, we compare with previous baselines. We consider MOCO V3, which belongs to the family of contrastive learning methods, and MAE, which belongs to the family of masking-based methods. Interestingly, L-day performs decently in comparison with MAE showing a degradation of 1.4%, VIT-B, or 0.8%, VIT-L. We note that here the training settings are made as fair as possible between MAE and L-Day. Both are trained for 1600 epochs and with random crop as the data augmentation. On the other hand, we should also note that MAE is more efficient in training because it only operates on unmasked patches. Nevertheless, we have largely closed the accuracy gap between May and a day-driven method. Last, we observe that autoencoder-based methods, May and L-Day, still fall short in comparison with contrastive learning methods under this protocol, especially when the model is small. We hope our study will draw more attention to the research on autoencoder-based methods for self-supervised learning.